Okay, today I'm going to make a beer that I only brew for Thanksgiving because it's one of the only times you can get fresh cranberries, at least where I am. So this is a cranberry blonde, um, and I actually usually serve it on Thanksgiving, which uh, it's really nice because it's light and fruity and kind of counteracts all of the heavy foods you're eating. So. Uh, the malt uh, in this guy is five pounds of uh, Pilsner, five pounds of Turo, and one pound of white wheat. So it's super simple and just a really light body with a nice creamy head from the wheat. And let's get started. I set my mill at about the width of a credit card. I use my subway card. And it looks like it's about there from the last time I uh, milled. But if you want to change it on this monster mill, all you do is loosen these uh, and then the rollers adjust with this turner. Okay, so I grind my stuff really fine because um, I'm doing the brew in a bag, so it's almost on the verge of flour, but very chunky flour. So doing that, I'll get a lot of uh, I'll get a lot of uh, yield um, from this malt, so I don't have to use typically as much as you would if you were doing um, like a normal mash, like in a cooler or something, um, because the screen holds back all the grain, so I don't have to worry about laudering. Okay, so I usually brew on the floor, but, you know, camera angles are weird when you're on the floor in a teeny kitchen, so I've devised a scheme to be able to brew on my stove, but with my electric system. I'm just using my stove as a tabletop, basically. Um, so what I'm going to do now is fill my kettle with uh, seven gallons of water. I'm not doing a sparge today because I'm a little sketched out about heating up water on my stove while I actually have like my electric kettle on the stove with its insulation and everything so I'm gonna do everything in the electric kettle today and we're gonna see how the uh, conversion rate goes um, usually I get about 80 um, when I do the sparge but uh, we'll see I haven't I think I've done I've done some batches when I first got the system uh, without a sparge, and it was it was pretty similar, but you know, I was just being creative, I guess. Uh, so let's get this thing going. So we mounted my control panel onto the wall, and this is actually like the best thing ever. I have not put my tubing on yet. I should probably do that, um, but I'm just gonna throw the water in now. And so I'm going to put seven gallons in, which is what I usually do all together. I usually do a six gallon uh, mash and then a one gallon sparge, but we'll just do it all at once. And I'm hoping my, um, I have enough enzymes to get all the mash converted, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn on my heat and I'm gonna set it to I'm gonna set it to let's see probably 156 uh, my strike so 156 will be my strike water temperature and 152 is what I want my mash temperature to be at but since there's so much more water than usual I think 
it'll probably drop it down to 152 if I have to put it at 156. For water in this beer, I went and got RO water uh, from my local grocery store. And the profile I'm going to use in Brewfather is just a balanced profile. So I'm going to add some uh, salt, but, you know, nothing to, like, push it one way or the other. Just kind of give it, like, rebuild what was lost in the RO process. So I'm adding... 3.6 grams of calcium chloride, 2.2 grams of Epsom salt, and 2.3 grams of gypsum. I'm also in the mash going to add 2 milliliters of uh, lactic acid because I have more water in my uh, mash than usual. Usually I can get away without using any lactic acid, but um, I think that the dilution is going to end up making the pH higher than I would usually have it. So I'm just going to hedge my bets and throw in two milliliters of lactic acid, um, especially because like I don't have a ton of gypsum going in here. Like if I were to have eight grams, I would probably not bother, but I'm a little worried about my pH. Uh, I found that I get a lot better conversion when I do have a pH between 5.2 and 5.5, so I always try to hit it. Okay, I'm going to add my salts to my water. Uh, we are at 134 degrees um, right now, and I've got my pump on because it seems like when I pump the water, it just kind of, the thermometer reads it better. Um, so I've got my thermometer pretty on point right now. And I'm just going to add this, and the water coming from the top will just mix it together. I'm going to add my lactic acid now. All right, we are at our temperature for the mash, so the strike water temperature. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mash in, and then take a quick pH reading. So it's been about 20 minutes. I'm just going to pull this guy out and drop it into a bucket and then uh, throw it into my compost bin because I already have a bunch of uh, dog biscuit dough made. So I'm going to just crack this lid so it can heat up a little faster, but I'm going to pull the lid almost completely off, probably completely off actually. Um, once it starts boiling, I've been, I sent a bunch of beers off to competition and a lot of them uh, had DMS come back as a, an off flavor. So you can get rid of DMS by just leaving the top off when you boil. And I didn't have a problem with it before, but I don't know, something about what I'm doing now is giving me DMS, so I'm just going to take it off and see if that fixes the problem. For hops, I am I'm using Matuka. If you've seen some of my other recipes, uh, you know that I'm a big fan of it. Uh, it's supposed to be super fruity, kind of like fruit punchy, um, and that's kind of how I like this beer to taste. It's kind of like a cranberry fruit punch. Um, and it's just really nice and easy to drink and goes well with turkey. So uh, I'm going to do one ounce of Matuka in the 60 minute and three ounces in 10 minute. And then in the 10 minute, I'm also going to add some yeast nutrient. Um, so I'm using a fresh pack of yeast. So I want to make sure it's got everything it needs and a World Flag tablet to uh, precip precipitate the haze um, in the boil. So I'm going to put the yeast nutrient in 
the 10 minute and I use about half a teaspoon and then I'll throw the world for luck in there too just so I don't forget it so I cleaned out my screen um I'm going to boil with the screen in because I'm putting a ton of cranberries into the actual boil so I want something to catch them because it won't transfer great if there's a bunch of cranberries clogging up the screen that's inside connected to the valve. Um, so it doesn't boil great with the screen in it, but it boils fine, I guess. Um, I really wish I had one that was like half the size of this because the boil tends to come up through the sides, but uh, I haven't had a problem really with paste or anything, so I think it's just a personal preference. Okay, so here's where the cranberry part comes in. So I have three pounds of fresh cranberries. I tried this with frozen cranberries and it didn't turn out the way I liked it. So you're free to try it, but I haven't had good experience with it. So I only make this once a year. Um, so we're gonna do three pounds of the cranberries and then I use half an ounce of lemon zest. Um, these are called pink lemonade lemons. Um, and I only use them because they grow in my front courtyard. Um, you can use any lemon. These are just fun because they're pink inside. So I'm going to, I'm gonna food process these um, just real quick, just to break them up. They're gonna go in the last five minutes of the boil. So we don't need to sanitize them because the boil is gonna kill everything on them. So one thing to know about using um, fruit in the boil is a lot of times, depending on the fruit, they have this, um, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, it's called pectin, and uh, it'll haze up your beer. It'll look like a smoothie when you're done. So you can uh, use this, you can use this enzyme, it's just pectic enzyme solution, um, and it'll basically break down all the pectin and it'll give you a clear beer. This beer turns out clear when I make it, um, but if I weren't to use this, it looks like I threw like milk in it. I'm really tempted to just throw this lemon into the food processor with the cranberries, but I'm always nervous that the flavor isn't going to come through, but this is gonna take me forever. Okay, so about three tablespoons is five or 0.5 ounces. And look how beautiful. It's like we're making Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, so we are boiling now. So I'm gonna do my first addition of hops. This is one ounce of Matuka. And I'm just gonna pour right in because I've got the screen going on there. All right, so setting a timer for 50 minutes because our next addition's at 10, we're gonna do three ounces of Matuka and then like the Werflock pellet and the yeast nutrient. And then at five, we're gonna do all the fruit. Okay, so we're at our 10 minute mark. So I'm just gonna throw in our three ounces of Matuka, Werflock tablet and yeast nutrient. And in five minutes, we'll add the cranberries. Okay, so now I am going to throw in my cranberries. So now that I have my cranberries in the boil, I'm going to hook the tube that's running into the lid into my wort in, and then in the wort out, I'm going to hook up this tube and just drape it in directly. Okay, so our boil's done. I'm gonna turn off the heat and turn on the pump 
it, as well as the water that's going to run through the uh, chiller. You gotta make sure all your valves are open. Don't run your pump dry. It's a bad idea. Okay, so it's down to 105, and I'm liking the color that's coming through the tube, so I'm gonna pull the cranberries now. I'm just gonna sanitize these in my hands before I get in there. Um, should be okay still, but. You never know. So there's a lot of cranberries and liquid in here still. It's probably about that high. Um, so I've just got to let it sit and drain. Uh, this is the problem using a screen. I should have used like a less fine mesh or something um, because it was like extremely difficult to get out and I had to call in backup. So. I won't be doing this again if I'm working on the stove. Typically I can get it out if I'm working on the floor, but I've got to come up with a better solution for that. Okay, so we're at 74 degrees now, so I'm going to transfer it into this SS brew bucket. Let's call it a 14.2. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take off the lid, sanitize it, um, and you know, dump out the sanitizer or whatever. So I've already sanitized this, but it's always good to give it another go right as you're about to transfer. I'm gonna turn off my pump. Just throw the tube in the bucket. Turn the pump back on. So I'll check this in a couple hours and see if it's down to temperature and then once it is, I will pitch just one packet of Dusseldorf Alt Yeast. Um, it does really well just with one packet. 